去。Panky panky no how. Panky 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 panky no how. White suit. Who who was who was like who was the guy on that cover? Um. Well, I, at the time I was working at Warner Brothers, and it was I was doing A and R, and you know, being when you when you're in A and R and you have your own record on the label, it's not a good position. It's uh, one thing does not help help the other, and if one thing is bad, it definitely works against the other. So. Um, I'd been working on these songs, and we had them all finished before making the record. So most of the time since then, it's really been improvising albums in the studio. But this one had a lot more thought to it. I I I started writing about uh, it was nostalgia more than anything. I mean, I I was sitting there in the California desert, thinking about all the things that I missed. You know, how did I end up here? I was there with with. with with the Velvets in 66 or 67. All the songs seemed to turn around my favorite topics at the time. I'm, now most of them are European, so I, I was writing mainly about what I missed about Europe. And uh, and that's that's how it, I, you know, the title didn't come until after everything was finished. It was a wraparound and uh, you know, it was the Cold War was going on and everybody was running off to Argentina to hide and find nuclear-free zones and all that. So, uh... been in LA and been in New York, uh, come from Wales. Where is where is home to John Cale? That's a perpetual question. It's the, it's the next hotel room, I guess. I mean, I have I have a daughter in New York, and I go there as often as I can. I have family in Wales, but really, um, displacement is really the 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 theme of the day most of the time. Has that sort of like displacement? Has that always been sort of a part of you? Yes, yes. I mean, it's it's a, it's a um, it's a rancid item, is about how I feel about Wales, and um, I'll give you a different answer every time you ask me. So it's <laughs> it's it's not something I'm I'm really. Uh, happy with, but um, it's a fact of life. When, when did you, when did you like realize that you had to get out of there? Very early on, I think. It wasn't just the economic circumstances, it was, it was a very repressive society. And um, uh, there was the issue of, uh, the, of the language and my relationship with, with my father that pretty much determined well, what I was going to do. And um, so it, it it really just gave me another impetus to make music work, you know, for me. It just, you know, my mother didn't, didn't care what I did as long as I didn't hurt anyone. And she thought that the idea of becoming a composer was was crazy. And, you know, you'd better off be a, a lawyer or a doctor. And, but um, with tenacity, I, I sort of convinced her that, you know, this was something that I was happy doing and really where my, where my heart was. How old were you when you like sort of 
figure that music is my way out of About here. About 13, 14. Was Child's Christmas in Wales sort of a, that song was that sort of an, a, a take on, on what it was like growing up there? Yeah, in a, yeah, in a, in a oblique way. And it's, and it's really about Christmas in Wales. Keep hanging. 
Gracefully she turned her head and smiled 
Lucia, when can I see you? When it is snowing out again, Father John wants you a lot of softer, closer and nearer than again, needing you, taking you. Myself, I'm standing there, but never ever talking sense. Just a visitor, you see, so much wanting to be seen. Coming through the door, make you carry us away. It's a customary thing to say or do to a disappointed proud man in his grief. And on Friday, she'd be there, and the Monday's not at all. Gradually appearing from the clock across the hall.
efficiency they say Get to know the name and tell the time of day As the crowds begin complaining And the bullshit is raining Down and Duncan meetings on the Charles
eventually in the past like 10 years it's some people saying why don't you do paris with an orchestra and it really it was something that that uh, i thought was unattainable uh, it takes time and money to get an orchestra together unfortunately and uh, that's why it took until cardiff and the international festival film festival to really put it together and do it properly I mean, this is the sixth time we've done it. It's not as if we, we like do it in a lot, of, a lot of places anyway. It's a luxury, actually, because it never happened in the studio. I mean, we overdubbed the strings, so it wasn't as if there was a grand performance done in the studio. Um, it's very nice. I mean, it's, it's um, um, the textures are, are there, and I'm very happy with the way, the way they all came out. So... Uh, until I until I go through this rigmarole of rearranging all of them, I mean uh, they're fine the way they are, and I didn't want to mess with them. Is there any any part of the Paris 1919 album that you're sort of particularly proud of when you go back and revisit it? Well, in performance, the most the favorite one is uh, uh, Half Past France. That has an atmosphere to it that really works live. That's the one. Th All the others are, are pretty much as you remember them on the record. But when you hear Half Past France live, it's um, it's an atmosphere. It's a very good atmosphere. How? What do you describe? Oh, you? it's it's floating. It it you know. I remember when we did the record. There was a guitar player there that uh, that sat in for Lowell on that particular one, and he was unfortunately one of these people. This was the last session that he did in in L.A. He had been, um, he had, had some peripheral involvement with the Manson family. And he, he had, when you looked at him, he was a shell. And he was worried that he was losing his soul. And he did this session. I remember afterwards that uh, that, that shattered personality that I saw there. And I don't know whether every time I do that song that with the, with the, with the orchestra, it has that sort of hollow feeling to it, but it's it's um, it's kind of deep, though. I mean, it's that sounds my favorite. I suppose I'm glad I'm on this train And it's long Somewhere between Dunkirk and Paris Most people here are still asleep But I'm awake Looking out from here At half past France Things are much different here than Norway Not so cold Wonder when we'll be in Dundee Old Harvick knows his way around He's no fool Hope I'll get to see my son again I'm not afraid. 
anymore In many mountains and all hills Back in Berlin they're all welfare I don't care Sits idly, fully armed. The powder and mascara there, a warning light for charm. We see her every moonlit night, the strong against the weak. The lines come out and struggle with the empty voice that speaks, that speaks. Long, long time. 
back was been and gone. He seen it all before. He took it in then and then walk it. He shook it in then and then rock it. Something right that way She knew it all To make you see things all the way Somebody knows for sure It's gonna be me or it's gonna be you Come on along, tell me it's all right now It's all right now, it's all right now It's all right for me Every time we've done it, we've added another song. And it's really because I'm uncomfortable throwing rock and roll um, songs into the format of the concert. You know, people come and say, and you do a, uh, Paris, which is 35 minutes, and then you have a, an intermission, and then you come back and you do rock and roll songs. That I'm sort of not comfortable with that. I'd rather find some other songs that really work with the orchestra.
just my memory today The day my ship set sail Atlantic seaboard east To India The seven seas East India Company the Cape of Good Hope, but there's no hope for me. to break India's back But she broke the back of me It was a painful sight At least to me I see the ghost is riding now the ghost of India Supreme Under the seven seas I hear them galloping Sing.